How about that cigar? I like turtles. It's so hot. Oh my god. Hot. Dude. I can't breathe. It's so hot. This is Minnesota. Hi guys. Welcome to How About That Cigar Live, episode 113. Right. My skin is melting off my body. No, hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> it's, sorry, it's hot. It's hot. It's like not supposed to be this hot in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Minnesota's supposed to be snowy and cold. It's where we play hockey. But our skin is melting off because it's been like in the 90s for the past week. We don't know what to do with it. We don't. Uh, but apparently you go up to your cabin Ooh. and build things. I put and- ice in my rum. That's how hot it is. You people know me. I don't do these things. But cheers, everybody. Welcome to How About That Cigar Live episode one thirteen. number 113. As always, brought to you from the Drew Estate Cigar Studios. And look at these beautiful Undercrown 10s. Drew Estate is commemorating 10 years of Undercrown with the global release of Undercrown 10, a bold new ultra-premium addition to Undercrown's current premium lineup of Maduro, Shade, and Sungrown Expressions. To celebrate the brand's anniversary in 2021, Drew Estate is getting all decked out, a tagline that denotes Undercrown 10's elegant packaging and reinforces the pride of Undercrown's 10 years of excellence. The new sophisticated packaging is surpassed only by Undercrown 10's complex, rich, and bold ultra-premium aged tobaccos that include the highest priming Mexican San Andreas dark wrapper, the very Mm -hmm. finest broadleaf binder from the Connecticut River Valley, and a tripa blend of select and rare Nicaraguan tobaccos. Mm -hmm. Born on the factory floor at La Gran Fabrica Drew Estate, the Undercrown brand is a passionate testament to the creative talent, dedication, and self-determination of, of Drew Estate's Torcedors. Blended with many of the same rare vintages found in Liga Pravada, Undercrown quickly became a grand slam for Drew Estate as consumers felt a deep personal connection to the grassroots firebrand mm. that celebrated the typical, the typically unheralded working class heroes employed at the Drew Estate Cigar Factory. For more info, please visit DrewEstate.com. So... We mentioned it's hot. We're not going to go back through it again, but uh, it's hot. <laughs> I, I'm sweating in places that that. Uh, Where are you going? Where are you going to go? I don't. I don't think I want to keep going with that okay. statement. All right. Yeah, I'm just going to leave that one right there. Yep. Ditto. But, but um, so as always, we'll talk a little bit about our Minnesota Twins, our beloved baseball team. <laughs> who were heralded before the season began or predicted before the season began by many experts to have a really good shot. Yep. And I don't think it's panning out. I don't think they've watched Minnesota sports before. I think those people just don't pay much attention. So in our, in our defense, we've had a lot of injuries, but we've also played Mm -hmm. pretty poorly as a baseball team. So, okay. And I will say that, so no continues to uh really shadow the life cycle that of Big Poppy. Yeah, he's he's had it it's, he's had a weird actually this last week has been very weird for him because yes. his hitting is in a slump and his fielding has improved. Right. So I'm try- <laughs> I'm yeah. trying to figure that one out. But um mark my words Within Boston. two seasons, Boston, he'll go somewhere. Yeah, he'll go to Boston, and will light it. Up. And and fifteen years from now, he'll be a legendary retiree of some yeah. other club yep. with with multiple World Series rings. Yeah, and you know what? God bless him. Absolutely. But I wish he would do it in Minnesota. Yes. But, you know it, it. It is what it is. It's uh, it's Prince's birthday. Is it Prince's birthday today? Happy birthday, Prince. Oh, uh, Tim Soot Camp. Minnesota has sports? Question mark. Yes, we. Yep. Yes, we do. We do have sports, but uh, um, we don't do them very well. We don't do them very well. Um, so I, th- I, th- I just don't want to talk about sports anymore. Okay. Yeah. What I want to do that's why is talk to our special guest of the evening on episode one thirteen. So as always, guys, you know that 
special guests on the show are brought to you by Corona Cigar Company and CoronaCigar.com, the Internet's largest and easiest to use virtual cigar store. Corona Cigar Company offers you the finest handmade cigars, humidors, and cigar accessories at the absolute lowest possible price. You'll also find unique and limited cigars containing Florida sun-grown tobacco. As a proud American, president and founder of Corona Cigar Company, Jeff Borshowitz believed it was possible to bring cigar tobacco farming back to Florida. At Corona Cigar Company and CoronaCigar.com, you'll find the best selection anywhere in the world of cigars containing this special florida sun-grown tobacco if you live in florida or are just visiting be sure to visit any of the great corona cigar locations in downtown orlando sand lake lake mary and also the davidoff of geneva lounge in tampa for more info on all of that please visit coronacigar.com and floridasungrown.com and ladies and gentlemen without further ado if you would please put your hands together and welcome to episode 113 of how about that cigar live Miguel Shodell, welcome to the show, brother. Thank you for having me on, guys. You know, I love being a part of your guys' show. I think you guys are some of the most entertaining guys, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here on show 113. Lucky 13. Lucky 13, that's right. And this is appearance number three for Miguel. So. Patrick. Oh, Patrick. Patrick. That's right. That's right. Do I, you know, like Saturday Night Live has, uh, you know, they, they have like the five timer club that say, I'm a three timer club with you guys, man. You are. I love that's it. Right. That's right. I think the so, first one. What's that? He might be the first one. You, I think, I think you're the first three time guest. I have the keys. I, I have the keys. We have yeah. a set, we have a set of steak knives for you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So uh, before we get going tonight, we're gonna Garrett and I are gonna fire up these beautiful. And you guys know mm. I've talked about this cigar so many times mm. that this is one of our favorites, the Court Reserve. Full, Full court, court press. press. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. Uh, I'm excited because I haven't that, smoked these in a little while. That cigar's got, uh, let's see, we released in 2018. So, you know, it's got a good three, three and a half, if not four years of age on that thing. Mm -hmm. And they are just getting, they're just getting better with time. Um, so for our viewers, let us know what are some of your favorite Crown Heads cigars? Yeah, um, let us know in the comments. Absolutely. I, I, I want to know. Um, and if it, may I? Of course. All right. Miguel. Yes, sir. What's the deal with the Tennessee Waltz? Wonderful what? Cigar. So Tennessee Waltz, you know, we made it exclusively for our accounts in Tennessee, much like the Yellow Rose of Texas for Texas and Buckeye Land for Ohio. Um, there is all oh, there has been for the last three years a major shortage of Connecticut broadleaf. So Lake Karem, Yellow Rosa, Texas, as well as um, as Tennessee Waltz has been in very rare supply. Uh, we do believe that by the end of this year we'll have a nice supply going out to uh, to retailers out there. And and you know it's one of those cigars. I will say that we've had plenty of opportunity to use other wrappers in place. And John and Mike, the owners of Crown Heads, have said, absolutely not. If we can't get the Broadleaf, we're not going to put the cigar out. Love and it. one, I, I love that honesty and I love that that integrity, you know, but it is oh, tough. Yeah. That means that the cigar is not available. And and so Lake Karem, we could be selling Lake Karem hands, hand over fist. That cigar is so popular, but we're waiting for the Broadleaf. And um, some companies can get it easier than others. And uh, But there has been a serious lack of Broadleaf for the premium cigar industry. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And we've heard that from others. So. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so I, actually, one thing I want to go back to that I, uh, I meant to mention, um, Miguel, before we brought you on, but we can actually kind of tie this into a question. So uh, we want to give a shout out and a thank you to our friends, Eric and Jordan and everybody at Cigar Dojo. They had their big annual cigar mm. on Saturday and uh, they invited us on. Unfortunately, Garrett was we were having some connection issues with Garrett, but we were still able to get on the on the show. And, and uh, I, I made a beautiful batch of uh, of pork belly burnt ends. Oh, nice. For the event. <laughs> and Garrett, yeah, I had a few left, and Garrett got to sample some tonight. They're, they they turned out pretty good. Not bad. Not bad. Good. But, Miguel, I wanted to ask you, um, because, you know, something that I think a lot of people enjoy is, is being outside with family and friends, maybe standing over a grill or, you know, sitting with a lawn chair and a cold drink next to a smoker waiting for waiting for the meat to come out. So 
what if if you could only have one type of food that you're sitting next to the smoker waiting for or you're you're standing over the grill with a cigar and a beverage what is that food that you're making so my grill is right over my shoulder and it's a dual grill so half of it is uh, charcoal and half is gas um comes in very handy you know i love grilling uh my whole life grilling has just been i picked it up in college and absolutely love it um for me it's going to be very different if it's for my wife it's going to be baby back ribs my wife and kids they love ribs we'll put them on the grill we'll have some nice apple wood we'll smoke them and um we'll use some um my wife is, is likes this particular barbecue sauce, barbecue sauce from Cincinnati, Montgomery Inn. Now, me personally, I'm a fish guy. I love fish. So any kind of salmon or really any kind of fish that can hold up to a really good smoke. Yeah. To me, what's great about it is you can eat it warm. You can eat it cold. You can break it up in a salad. You can put it, make it on a sandwich. I mean, yeah. I love smoked fish. And I grew, up, I grew up in Cincinnati. Luckily, we had a grocery store um near us that got fish flown in three times a week so i had very good fresh fish but living down there now in florida much easier to get a nice variety of fish i love trigger fish and some of the you know corvinas and things that i had a hard time getting up north but so for me it's fish always fish so do you do uh uh scallops are good seafood, like shellfish in that too yeah yeah so for me anything that comes from the ocean nice um i would Same probably here. eat i'd probably eat a dolphin if uh, if it was legal, uh, anything from the ocean, octopus, shellfish, clams, I'll eat them raw, I'll eat them cooked. I don't care. Yeah. Oysters on the grill. Uh, yeah, we do a lot of that, man. I, yeah. I just I grew up with uh, with a mother that loves seafood. So we grew up eating seafood. So, you know, um, it's stuck with me and I've got my kids into it, too. And, and my wife is from Puerto Rico, uh, grew up in Puerto Rico. So she was surrounded by an ocean, obviously. And, and so seafood is big with her as well, although she will never give up her pork. Pork is her number one. Um, yeah. Yeah. So basically throw a jellyfish at your face. Like you <laughs> yes. Are, you yes. 100%, brother. 100%. Yeah. I feel that. And, you know, so Matt made those amazing burnt ends. Um, I So we've got this shared family cabin in northern Wisconsin, and I was fortunate to have a group of guys come up and help me with some projects. It's the second time that, you know, majority of these guys came up, worked their butt off, and, and then we get to play. Um, but one of the guys, he is starting a YouTube channel cutting up meat. And so he got this huge tenderloin. Um, and you know, he did a video up there of cutting up this tenderloin. And then I was able to show them sous vide. They'd never heard of sous vide before. Oh, nice. Um, and, uh, they were like, I'm kind of old school. And I'm like, Hey, <laughs> trust me on this. And my sous vide steaks way outperformed what the other guy's steaks did. Well, know? you know, I, I think what's amazing, there's all these great techniques. And for whatever reason in the cigar industry, things get popular, certain watch brands, certain this or that. But sous vide, the last couple of years have been so hot in the cigar industry, like everyone's doing it. And I, we have a rep in Texas, Brian McGee. Now, Brian and I, we go way back. I mean, we work together at CAO. We work together at Torano. We work together at Crown Heads. Brian is a devout grill master. Yes. And, and, uh, and for him, uh, sous vide is something that he absolutely loves. I mean, he loves sous vide, and I know Skip does, and a bunch of other guys in the industry does do too. No, Jared Trudeau. Yep, yep. Jared, Jared's a good guy. Christoph, yeah. Jared's a good dude. <laughs> Jared and uh, has the best sous vide rant in our show history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's 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 cool, man, because you know I, I, there's something special. Uh, I don't understand people that don't grill, right? So so every day since COVID, our sales team Monday through Friday. We get um, oh, Miguel's the goat. I like that. Thank you, thank you, Jared. Um, so we get together every day with our sales team for at least a half an hour every day, five days a week, just as a team building thing. Talk about business. Talk about life. Anything. And literally, um, probably half the conversations are about grilling because almost everyone on the team, with the exception of two people, um, do not really grill. Everybody else, it's it's charcoal it's fire some guys have the uh the, the the one with the feeder and they do the little pellets we don't care as long as you grill that's what's important and but sous vide is is man that's that is really popular yeah oh and it and it just takes all the guesswork out of it and it's not it about being you know and, and and believe me believe you me i can grill a steak 
mm -hmm. with, without a sous vide. You know, I, you know, it's it as Jared put it in his rant. It's science, yeah, and it works, and it's <laughs> it's just awesome. So. <laughs> I just still go back to the comment, Jared. The, the funniest part of the whole rant for me was an old man screaming at the sky. You know, sweating, sweating over his family's food. Sweating into his family's I just love it. I just love it. So, um, Look, there, you, can, you can always improve everything, right? And I right, think, right. I think it's, you got to mix it up a little bit, right? There's certain you things that... Mix it up. Yeah, but I, I, you know... Wrong, there's nothing wrong with, with still going old school and throwing, throwing a ribeye uh over over charcoal or or mm -hmm. wood fire there's nothing wrong with that look man I, I i you know i watch uh so much youtube I, I i don't watch any tv i mean i'm a youtube fanatic and people are cooking steaks on on the charcoal now you know what i mean yeah. and and directly on yeah cowboy cowboy steaks yeah yeah and they're knocking off you know these big old chunks of charcoal stuck to the steak look man <laughs> there's there's a million ways to do it at the end of the day yeah. as long as it tastes good and your family loves it and you love it yeah. That's, that's what's important. And that's you have right. a good cigar and good cocktail. I'm the same way with alcohol, though. You know, if you're drinking rum, you want to put it on ice. You want to put it in pineapple juice. You want to drink it neat. I don't It's As long as you're drinking good stuff, man, that's what's yeah. important to me. Yeah. yeah. Hey, and any haters out there that are calling it boiling meat, a.k.a. <laughs> uh, soup camp, I will challenge you to a steak off. He, soup camp knows. He's just he's just trolling. He, is, he knows. He is the major he, troll. He, he knows full well. He does. He's just being... He's, we love that guy. Yeah. Steak so, off. <laughs> like steak that. off. I'll so, steak off. Uh, the Miguel, the last time we, I actually thought it was more recently, but you haven't been on the show since it was, it's been like over a year. I think it was May of last year. With the exception of the TPE. With the, oh, yeah. Well, with the exception of TPE. But, um, you know, May was kind of the thick of things when it comes to the lockdowns and all that, you know, last year. So, um, you know, as as things progress through the rest of 2020 and now the first half of, of 20, I mean, I can't believe 2021 pretty much half over. So, you know, just kind of give us a sort of a general idea of, of how the first half of uh, 2021 is going so far for Crown Heads and Ace Prime. Well, I mean, obviously it's been it's been a boom, right? It's been a boom. And <clears throat> it, look, COVID is, is a very sad very sad situation. There's a lot of people that have lost their lives. Um, people can get political about it. I don't really care. It's it's a sad thing, right? Yeah. Many industries were affected very harshly. For whatever reason, the cigar industry really wasn't. We were kind of, uh, it was almost a boom for us. Yeah. And so, and, and during the 20, you know, January, February, March was scary. Our industry didn't know what was really going to happen. And then come, you know, kind of April, May, boom, things took off and they have not slowed down. So the yeah. problems that all the cigar industry is having right now is getting enough bands printed for your cigars, getting enough boxes made, having enough tobacco to roll cigars so you can age them and then get them out for orders. I mean, it's it's trying to keep up with production has been has been a struggle, right? But it's been a boom for us. 2020 was great. 2021 has been even better sales wise. Uh, I obviously part of that is COVID, but I do think part of it is I think Crown Heads as a company since we've teamed up with Ace Prime, we've taken a big step forward. And, you know, we're in 1500 accounts across the US. Now we're in more countries around the world than ever before. But I would say over this last year or so, there were definitely accounts in the country that said, eh, not much of a boutique you know, store or, or whatever franchise. We don't really carry your kind of product product. And then over the last year and a half, they've come to us and said, wow, people are asking for your cigars, normal people, you know, guys that are golfers, you know? So I think we've kind of transitioned into a different atmosphere that we've, that crown heads really maybe hasn't played in outside of that boutique realm. So it's been incredible. Um, always count your blessings, all the cigar smokers out there that spend their hard earned money on our blends and our brand. Um, it doesn't go unnoticed. We, we thank you guys so much and it's truly been a blessing for us. And, and so we, we hope to just continue to create great products and, and, and make retailers happy by putting these products on the shelf and then ultimately consumers enjoying them and supporting their brick and mortars. So yeah. it's been good. Awesome. Well, and you touched on the, uh, Ace prime relationship and we had just a little taste of that at the TPE, mm -hmm. uh, when we, you know, interviewed both you and Luciano. Could you take us through kind of the genesis of that, how that came to be and where we are today? 
Yeah, so I'm, I've, I've been, for the last decade, I've been really good friends with Irradio Pichardo, who worked in the Cuban cigar industry. His father was really into farming and irrigation, so his father had a big influence on, on the industry, Cuban industry, way back in the day. And then um, Pichardo worked on the Partagas brand. He was part of the group that helped develop the Partagas Series D and some of the other ones. And when he left Cuba, he left for, he went to one of going to Brazil and then wind up settling in Nicaragua, opening a factory there and, and called Hot to Way. And so I knew him for a long time and through him, I met Luciano and we were just all good friends. So when I'd go to Chicago, cause Luciano used to live up there, I'd stay at Luciano's house. We'd hang out, we'd have cigars. And when I'm in Nicaragua, I'd always go hang out with Pichardo. And uh, one year they, they, they came to the show, just kind of walk around and uh, introduce themselves to people as they were thinking about, you know, branching out and maybe starting their own brand. This is before Ace. They just had the factory. They renamed the factory Tobacco Loto Pichardo after Iradio. Mm -hmm. And um, and they came, and Luciano came to me and said, hey, look, man, um, I'd love to give Cronhead some samples. You know, could you introduce me to John and Mike? And, and I said, Luciano, you know, I'm friends with you. I've been friends with them for a long time, too, and I work for them. I said, all I can do is introduce you. I, I can't make any promises. Um, and they gave John a bunch of samples of cigars that they were working on and John fell in love with them. Mike fell in love with them. That created a, a conversation between those guys. And eventually we just start, started to work on making cigars with them. And Mil Diaz was the first blend we worked on. We worked on and worked, you know, took time off on it, worked. And then we did Juarez before we released Mil Diaz. And it just became a very fruitful for relationship and ace prime had launched at the trade show that following year had a big presence and what it really came down to was having the same kind of beliefs having the same kind of work ethic the same kind of integrity and it became of hey why don't you guys focus on the factory which you guys do best grow because they grow tobacco in nicaragua they grow tobacco in ecuador they have farms in both places they have a factory they're totally vertically integrated. Why don't you guys work on that? We'll distribute your brand and we'll help promote Ace Prime. And so that is really, that's what happened during during COVID. We, we took over the distribution of their brand and and it's been a very fruitful relationship. We have their, their cigars in probably about 500 uh, retail locations in the US and internationally they're growing as well. And so here we are today, we have a strategic alliance, what we call it. Um, it's truly, when you think crown heads, think Ace. And when you think Ace Prime, Think Crown Heads. It's really a partnership of really two companies doing what they do best, working together and helping to build. Uh, and and they just they do great work. Besides making cigars and growing tobacco, they're very very in tune to um, the struggles of the people of Nicaragua and really doing a lot of great things for for their employees and people that work at the fields. And so it, for us, it was a great kind of into that as well, working with these people and and getting a little bit more ingrained in Nicaragua. And so it's been a great, great relationship. And today, um, this year at the trade show uh, at PCA, you'll see us in the same booth. Yeah, which is, it's it's great. And you guys really do, mm -hmm. you you can tell that it's, uh, it, and even just at the little booth at TPE, because TPE is a different atmosphere, but, but even in that small booth, you can really feel the family atmosphere, the family relationship between between Crown Heads and Ace Prime. You guys are really you just seem to be vibing on the same on the same tune yeah. right now. And it's really it's really cool to see because, um, you know, there's there's like you said, there's so much that each company uh, gives to the other and gets from the other. And it seems like a really good partnership. It is. And, and, you know, it's, it's their, their expertise. Luciano is a great blender. <clears throat> He's great at working with tobacco. Uh, Pichardo loves the growing aspect and spending a lot of time on the farm. So they both have their specialties. John and Mike have a combined 60 plus years in the premium cigar industry in the U S and so marketing and advertising and, and events and, and, and really promoting is something that they've been very strong at. Obviously, you know, we came, a lot of us came from CAO and, and at that time we were a juggernaut independent CAO company was family owned. And, and really what we've come to today is a brand crown heads and a brand ace prime that are in the vast majority of premium cigar stores in the United States and around the world. And it's been a fruitful relationship because we rely on each other's strengths to build each other up. And it's been great. Yeah. Do we know what the future holds for the branding? Are we going to be 
um, you know, kind of two lines, same on or two different lines under the same umbrella. We got Ace Prime, we got Crown Heads, or is there a, a trajectory to consolidate? Well, I, I think for now, the, the they have their own identity, Ace Prime, and they have their lines, Pichardo, Classico, Pichardo, Reserve Familiar, they have the Luciano, and they're going to have, um, uh, they have MXS, and they're going to debut some new lines at the trade show as well. Right now, we 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 really are two identities. Um, I think naturally, like anybody else, you start growing together, and, and I hope, I mean, I, I can't tell you what the future holds, but I hope that we continue to get closer and work together, and who knows? I mean, you know, maybe in, in the future we'll be one happy family, or we'll be two separate families, but at the end of the day, we'll, we're, we're going to be working together. I mean, almost all of our new releases obviously are coming from them, and we're doing a lot more with those guys and getting more and more ingrained in their factory, and it's just... Um, who knows what the future holds, but I think unity, uh, there's strength in that. Yeah. yeah. And I think when you look at Pete Johnson, you think of my father, when you look, you think of my father, you think of Pete Johnson and, and there's, and there's relationships. Alec Bradley's another one. Alec Bradley, you think of Rice's Cubanas and Rice's Cubanas, you think Alec Bradley. And I think it's a very similar relationship. You know, luckily we have great relationships with my father. We have great relationships with, with Drew Estate. Um, and we have Ernie, who is, we always say he's kind of the third member of Crown Heads. You have Mike, John and Ernie's kind of the silent member, right? I mean, he's done so much for Crown Heads and we love Ernie. Um, but we've never been able to really have a factor where we could put our hands in and really get involved. And, and that's what we are able to do. And it's exciting. And for us, it's just another level of commitment to the industry. And yeah. uh, it's been a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Well, and what <clears throat> that's actually a good question too, for, is when you've got, like you said, the, the Pichardo factory where you can really, you, you can spend more time directly in the factory, whether it's through, um, uh, through Luciano or even uh, you or somebody else, you know, or John going down to the factory and, you know, really getting your hands in things. And not that you can't do that at the Drew Estate factory with projects you partner on or at uh, uh, Tabacalera uh, La Alianza where you can, you know, partner on a project. But where where are the biggest differences in, in, those, in those factories? Because I, I noticed in the uh, d different cigar factories that I visited, al although the process is looks very similar on the surface. There are all of these, these little things underneath that, that kind of make a difference. So where have you noticed the differences between those, those factories? Well, I think for some of the factories that you work with, they'll say, this is what we have available and you can blend with, with these tobaccos where with tobacco or Pichardo, the difference would be, this is what we have. This is what we grow. This is what we buy. And if there's something we don't have, let us know, we'll go get it. Um, and through their strategic relationships that they have with farmers um, all over uh, Latin America and Ecuador and everywhere else that we're able to get things that maybe we haven't been able to get in the past or create some projects where maybe it's a little bit different aging process, a little bit uniqueness that Pichardo and all of his years of, of knowledge he's tapped into. I will tell everyone, every factory you go into you're going to feel very, very similar. It doesn't matter if it's the big AJ factory or my father or Fuentes. You, when you look at the surface, it's all very similar. But the truth is, is that everyone has their own way of fermentation. They have their own way of aging. They have their own way of producing cigars. They have their own way of training their rollers. And so everyone has a very unique character on how they go forward in, in, in creating this premium cigar, right? And so the way that Pichardo does it is very different than someone else does it. And that very much intrigues us. You know, they have a line called um, Pichardo Reserva Familiar, where for three months they're aging them in plastic bags, um, which cuts off a lot of the oxygen. And then they take it out of there and then they age it in, a, in an aging room for another year after that. So those kind of things we've never seen before. You know what I mean? So there are different techniques that everyone has. And it's it's incredible to be able to work with so many different factories and, and tap into the what they're great at. And so with Pichardo, we just have a little bit more access in, in choosing or doing what we work with. And, you know, if, if John says, hey, I really want to work with this particular tobacco, instead of saying, no, we don't we don't you know, carry that or we don't buy that or we don't have a way to access that. A guy like Pichardo will say, hey, I can get it. It's not a problem. We'll make yeah. it happen. You know, we actually have a we actually have a an honest to goodness question comment from Tim Suitcamp. Uh oh. 
What's okay. in here? Yeah. What's happening right now? Nice. Thank you, Tim. Tim, Tim says, what's the story behind the Lost Angel? All right. So we are members of TAA. TAA is Tobacconist Association of America. There's about 80 members. And every year they meet somewhere. Usually it's the Dominican Republic or Mexico. And we have our own little trade show for them and some companies. Christoph, one of them, uh, LaFleur, Padron, Pete used to do it. Um, we do um, cigars exclusive to those members. And the Lost Angel is a kind of a prequel cigar, if you will, to the law to the Angel's Anvil is a cigar that we created for them for years. And uh, every year the blend would change. And we just absolutely loved um, the Angel's Anvil. And then the story, they, every cigar we have, there's a story. It's a fun story behind it, right? And so the Angel falls from, from heaven and he wants to get back up to God. So what does he do? He has an anvil and he has a hammer and he builds himself wings so he can fly again, right? And so the Lost Angel is basically you know, the story be before that when he's lost and he hasn't got those tools yet to build his wings. And, and so there's a fun story behind it, but the lost angel we were supposed to release last year, but COVID had put a kibosh on it. So we wind, wind up reformula uh, reformulating the blend and Tobacco Little Pichardo took over production and that cigar has been least a member so a member of taa and this year it's it's pretty cool looking the band is black um the cigar is very dark oily maduro the logo is black so it's black on top of black on top of black it's just it's really cool as the kids would say it's murdered out it's murdered out nice <laughs> well and I, I know there's a shop in town that that has them i just haven't had a chance to get over there and pick some up yeah so, so i'm um i don't think we've ever really talked about the the taa relationship uh too much in depth when you look at the TAA lineup, mm -hmm. is there a strategy to add something to that lineup that's that's outside of what's already there? Or what what are you looking to do for the TAA? Well, the TAA members are a group of a lot of great retailers in the United States. They have a lot of buying power. A lot of them have been in the industry a very long time, run great retail shops. And they form, they come together every year and they just want to make their shops better. They want to promote the industry. And, and so they have this, this kind of club, right? And every year, maybe one or two drop out and two or three come in and they have just a great organization. And for us, part of creating a cigar for them is a thank you for them supporting us. Um, something that we can um, promote through their stores. They're very proud to be members of TAA. So it's really also because we do a thousand box run and that's it. We cap it at a thousand box and we sell out every year. So it allows us as a manufacturer to make a cigar on a very small production run. I mean, a thousand boxes is tiny, yeah. but we're able to use maybe tobaccos um, or different techniques that we wouldn't normally be able to do on a large production. So yeah. some of those are very um, just fun projects that John gets to do and create maybe with some tobaccos that we wouldn't normally get to use on a larger production. Um, and so that's really what it's about. It's about creating a cigar just for them that they can promote their stores, that they can promote the organization. And obviously they raise money in that, in that foundation organization to help um, promote the industry and help, help their, um, their organization promote and be good, good people to the industry. And so we're very proud to be a, a part of that. I don't know if that answers your question or not, but um no, yeah, I, we're, I mean, we're able to produce yeah, a cigar on a small scale. That that's fun, you know. You guys are producing. You, it doesn't matter what anybody else is throwing into the pouch. You guys are focused in on really just putting out a product to say thank you to all of your retail partners, mm -hmm. and you know has nothing to do with with anybody else other than the brotherhood that and sisterhood that is shared in that organization. Look, yeah. every every company is different, but our company relies heavily on brick and mortar and those stores are all brick and mortar and it really gives us a lot it, it just you want to support these individuals these retailers and and they're doing a lot of hard work and so for it's our way of saying thank you and being part of the organization and and just being you know part of part of the movement i guess you can say of, of promoting the industry and promoting the lifestyle yeah love it so the going back to uh the the, the mil diaz and and the Juarez, like you said, have, have just, I mean, we've seen it. They've, they've been killing it really since they were released and, and Mil, Mil Diaz, you know, making the, making the big list and, and making the top five in the consensus 
you know, it's, this is a big deal. And, and when, when that kind of, when that kind of heat comes onto a brand and really starts to get notoriety like that, um, how does that, first of all, first of all, how does that affect, um, you know, relationships with the retailers that already carry it as far as keeping up with demand? And then how does that affect the process of looking at future projects? You know, when, uh, when, when John and, and Luciano and, 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 and you guys look at a new project, do sometimes I equate things to music and, and, you know, when, so somebody, do we. <laughs> when somebody has a hit song, you know, you, you want to have another hit song, but you don't necessarily want to write the same song over again. Yeah. So, so how does the, when, when you have a hit song in mil, like in mil Dias, for example, what's the process look like for going back to the writing room and putting together a, a, a blend that is going to be another hit song, but isn't going to sound the same. So that you'll see that at PCA this year, our new release at PCA that we'll announce um, maybe sometime late this month. But <clears throat> Mil Diaz, first of all, I, I, I can't tell you enough on what Mil Diaz has become. I mean, you, you mentioned what, all, the, all the ratings, all the top five lists and, and every major list out there. Mil Diaz has gone to another level for us and, and Juarez as well. Those two lines have become staples in a very short amount of time staples in a lot of humidors and first of all you're, you're you're blown away by the support of the retailers you're blown away by the support of the consumers and instagram really blew that blend up and i will tell everyone i it's hard for someone to take my my word seriously but to me mil Diaz, that blend in particular is is a desert island cigar for me that's a cigar like our four kicks where i could smoke all day every day and that's why I think that cigar has become what it has become. And I will tell you, it has become our biggest hit, right? Um, and so it's been it's been incredible. Now, the hard part, I don't have the hard part. The hard part goes on John. John has a hard part of following up, right? How do you follow that up? And we kind of experience that every year, every year with Las Calaveras, right? Because every year, Las Calaveras, people want you to top the previous year, and it's tough to do that. And um, so for us, it's it's... What Mil Diaz is, is a very complex, medium-bodied cigar with a ton of layers of flavor. We're using tobacco in there, uh, the Costa Rican in there particularly, that is very salty, has very high salinity, which makes you really salivate a lot, which allows you then to pick up the Peruvian, uh, the, per the Peruvian um, 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 uh, oro, uh, Pero de Oro, tobacco that's much more rare that a lot of people don't get to use. And so there was a lot of complexity, but being very medium bodied. So if you smoked mild, you could smoke it. If you smoke full body, you could smoke it. So how do you follow that up? Well, you got to go the opposite direction. You either go full, full bodied or you go super mild, right? So John has created, um, a, I think, a great follow up that, that you guys will see at PCA this year. But it is tough, man. There's always a lot of pressure when you create something that people love. Like I always think of like Pete Johnson when he did the Monster series. He probably did not think in the beginning it would become what it has become. Yeah. And, and so Mil Diaz was very much that. We were proud of it. It, was, it became a, a favorite of ours before we released it. And we said, man, we think this is one of the best things we've ever done in all of our years of being in this business. And it's turned into a monster for us. And we count those blessings, you know. And it's hard to follow up. You're always every – in this industry – Unlike, uh, you know, unlike a, a musician who could put out an album every five years, you know what I mean? Or if you're someone like a Sade or a, a Michael Jackson, it was every 10 or 15 years, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. This industry is very much what's new, what's new, what's new. So by keeping Mil Diaz, by per putting out limited edition shapes and sizes that maybe regular production wouldn't fit into regular production, we've been doing that. And then the new blend that'll be out at PCA will be very different. We'll have no connection to Mildius except it comes out the same factory. Um, so you guys will have to stay tuned and, and see what we have planned. But I think we have a great follow-up to Mildius. Have you had any like any of the producers from NCIS or um, you know CSI Miami um, <laughs> from all the murdering that the Mildius has been doing? <laughs> yeah, just for a storyline. Yeah. <clears throat> America's most wanted, brother. America's bad boys, yeah. bad boys, bad boys. Yeah, cops. We'll get. Um, 
man, look, it's it's been so yeah. incredible, man. And you know, uh, the sizes that we originally chose, John chose Corona Gorda, the Edmundo, the Double Robusto, the Sublime. It's really the blend really fits well within those ring gauges from 46 to 54. And doing the limited edition sizes, you know, we did a Mareva, which is a true Cuban Corona. We did now a a double um, double Corona. We released recently in a limited edition in Mil Dias, and we'll have another one at the end of the year as well. It's just, um, man, it's 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 a fun blend. It lends itself to a lot of very traditional sizes, which has allowed us to do some of those fun sizes that are more traditional that maybe regular production, you know, really would not fit in that regular production. But um, it, it's it's been overwhelmingly positive and and amazing. So um, you just count, you know, just count your lucky stars, man, and just just be very happy and very humble and blessed that you have a blend that really connected with people and to the point where. Um, we were very nervous because we were launching it during COVID, you know, would it kill the brand because our other brands were all killing it with this brand new brand, not have a chance to get any legs. And it was the total opposite. It just completely blew up. And so, um, I think that speaks volumes for the blend, um, mm -hmm. speaks volume for the, the name and speaks volume to the factory that produces it. I mean, you know, I think when you talk factory of the year, um, I think tobacco letter Pichardo has to be up there. Um, what they've done in a very short amount of time uh, since they've really come to the American market, they have put out just banger after banger after banger. And it's Absolutely. been incredible. Yeah. Well, and you know, it's one thing to be in your position, right? Where, you know, you've, how many times have you picked up a test blend and said, this is really unique and special. And then the public doesn't respond and like, and like with the mill DS though, what was that process like with those test blends? Did you think it was special from the start or was that kind of a unknown? No, I will tell you that <clears throat> there are plenty of cigars that I've smoked throughout my almost 20 years in this business that I have fallen in love with that did not work out for whatever reason, mm -hmm. you know, and, <clears throat> and there are blends that I smoked and I go, man, I don't see it. And this, it sells like crazy. You know what I mean? And sometimes you have that. Well, I will yeah. tell you, uh, so if Luciano was here, uh, Luciano it, it would tell you the story that when they first, he loves to name his blends. It doesn't matter, you know, it's not Liga A or Liga B or Liga 101 or Liga 402 or whatever. It, he names each blend. And so this blend was called, uh, he named it Magical because there's a story where Pichardo's, um, I think it was his mother or father had passed away. And all the factory, other factory owners in Nicaragua came to their factory to smoke cigars and, and raise a toast to his family. And he, they passed that blend out. And every one of those people that were there said, oh, my God, this is, this is crazy. What is this? This is a great cigar. And they said, well, we, we haven't released it yet. And that was the beginnings of Mil Dias. And almost three years later, it was released as Mil Dias, a few tweaks here and there. And, um, and that's why it's called a thousand days from the first time we really smoked it and through all the blending changes and little changes and you got to sit on it, let it age for a little bit, smoke it. Um, and John being the genius that he is, I mean, really he allows the blend kind of to speak to him and naming cigars is a big deal to him. Each cigar has a story, each cigar has a purpose. And so for him, the, 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 the story, the process, the, the time that they spent on this cigar um, really is what I think made the cigar special. And, and that's what the name Mil Diaz really means. You know, I love that story. So uh, we talked a little bit about TPE already and also about PCA, but kind of looking ahead to PCA, PCA is, um, you know, it's, it's more than just a place to, for you guys as a, as a, as a cigar company to go and, sell cigars, open new accounts, expand existing accounts. It's more than just a place for retailers to go and fill their humidors for the year. It's, it's a, it, it's a place about reconnecting with old friends and building relationships and getting the word out about your products, maybe to people who, who don't or can't go to PCA. So, and, and crown heads and ACE prime have been very vocal about their support of the PCA and about their support of, um, uh, the, the activities that go into, um, keeping cigar smokers free to enjoy their cigars and things like that. So when it, when it comes to you guys at PCA, 
what are the big strategies that you go into a show like that relying on when it comes to that trade show? Uh, what does that look like for you? So for us, the PCA is, <clears throat> I'll put it, break it down in a couple different ways. So the PCA trade show is a trade show, right? It's, it's where you show off your new wares. Every industry, the candy industry, the video game industry has E3 and all these other industries out there have trade shows. There are trade shows that are probably very boring to go to. You know what I mean? Maybe there's a vacuum yes. cleaner. You know I've, what I mean? I've been um, to a trade lot of show. trade shows. There are a lot of boring <laughs> trade shows out there. The great thing about the premium cigar uh, trade show, it's been around a very long time. And it's a trade show that obviously has to do with a hobby that is enjoyed by millions of, of people across the country. And so part of it is showing off your new wares. Part of it is um, connecting with your retailer. And part of it is really just the industry coming together and showing their support for our industry as a whole. And the industry itself, <clears throat> obviously, we're always always under the gun. P, uh, you know, if it's the FDA, if it's the anti-smoking, if it's the tax increases, it's a place for all of us to come together and really unite. And I will tell you, every single rep that goes to the trade show, they get home, they're re-energized, they're hyped, they're excited. The, 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 they bring that energy out. And for us as manufacturers, and I, can, I think I can speak for all manufacturers, it's the one time of the year that all your retailers come to see you. Our sales guys travel. They go and see retailers every day. By, by plane, by car, they're visiting accounts every, and we do events, we meet consumers. This is the one time of the year where retailers all come and see us, manufacturers. And so it's your opportunity to roll out the red carpet and, and, and offer some deals and, and introduce them to new stuff you're working on and just reconnect. And the cigar media is a big part of that. Um, because consumers don't come to the trade show, it's a way for people like you to cover the trade show and bring this information to your readers and to people that are paying attention to what you guys are doing and a way for you to translate what we're doing out to the masses. And we are big supporters of PCA. Crown Heads, first and foremost, always been. And as soon as um, uh, Ace Prime came into the Vogue, they've been big supporters of PCA. So we're committed to doing a PCA uh, trade show exclusive. We're committed to releasing new products because during, especially during COVID, a lot of retailers said, look, my guys are, you know, I'm still selling cigars, uh, either curbside or people coming in with masks, but you still get the same question. What's new? What's new? And retailers want the, 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 the core lines to always be there, but they always need something new for retailers to see. And so it's a big part of us making sure that retailers have fun, exciting, good products that they can bring back and share with their consumers and with their customers. And so the trade show, I think, has a huge impact. And I know there are companies that are not going to go this year. There are companies that have pulled out. There may be companies taking a year off or whatever. At the end of the day, this organization is our organization, right? We It's like your brother, right? You can beat up on your brother, but no one else can beat up on, you know what I mean? You won't let anyone else beat up your brother. And that's sometimes we do in the industry. You know, people have their love-hate relationship with PCA. But at the end of the day, PCA fights on our behalf to be able to do what we do and keep this industry going. Um, and so for us, it's very important. Uh, guys like Pete Johnson are very committed to it as well. Um, Rocky is a huge supporter of PCA as well. So for us, this is the one time of the year where all the retailers come see us and we wanna make sure that it's very fruitful for them and they walk away energized, excited, and hyped for the last half of the year. Yeah. And that's, that's a great way to put it, you know, because we've, we've talked to, uh, you know, Scott Pierce and Josh Haberski from the PCA before, and we've talked about, you know, we've been very open and honest and asked them, ask them some very tough questions, you know, about, yeah. uh, things like, like that. And Miguel, you put it really well that we may not always completely be on the same page or agree with every little thing that PCA does or says. But in the end, I do agree that, that we have to find a way as a industry, as a premium cigar culture to put all our focus, you know, in the same direction when it comes to the legislative fight and the PCA right now the PCA that's that's really what they do is they they apply all they take all these resources 
and they try to find a cohesive focus that aligns with the the majority of uh, manufacturers and retailers and uh, and apply that focus to the efforts that they that they put into Washington. So, you know, again, if we may not always love every move they make, but I agree that and we came to this conclusion finally that that we really have to, um, you know, at least at least put our hat in the ring. Yeah. And and be a part of it and then work out the details as we go instead of just pissing all over it and and yeah. saying, no, I'm not going to go. I mean, PCA, you know, they probably have retailers that are members in probably 45 of the 50 states. Um, and and there's a lot of different people that are a part of that. You're, you're never going to make everyone happy. It's literally impossible to make everybody happy. But at the end of the day, I, I believe in my heart that if it wasn't for PCA over the last, let's say, 20 years, that we would be in a very tough position as an industry. There would be a lot higher taxes per state, there'd be a lot more smoking bans, there'd be less caps that states have, and there would be a lot more FDA control. Um, it's because of the millions of dollars that they spend that yeah. we are in a position. Now, people get angry at the position we're in with FDA and stuff, but I think people have a hard time thinking, what if PCA wasn't there, where yeah. we would be today? And that's where I, I will carry that flag. Scott and all those guys, they work very hard over there, and uh, it's, it's a very tough position to be in. Right. But at the end of the day, as a brand, Crown Heads and Ace Prime, we very much support Ace Prime or support PCA in their in their actions. Yeah, and we got to say, everybody raise a glass. We got Luciano in the chat saying, "Cheers, brother. Hey! Luciano, cheers to you, brother. Great to uh, great to hear from you. Love Hope everything's guy. going well in Nicaragua." Um, so, you already uh, mentioned that there are some really cool things we can look forward to. Uh, being announced and unveiled at the PCA trade show. We're really excited for that. Um, I also want to find out about the the in-store events and things like that because, again, little by little, things are opening up. We're seeing a lot of different cigar companies starting to have in-store events again. So what does that look like for Crown Heads and Ace Prime moving forward? Are you starting to have some in-store events on your schedule? Yeah, so our guys have done some smaller in stores. We see that a lot of multi vendors or uh, events are starting to come back on the calendar. I'm very proud at Crown Heads. We do a lot of events, um, and and with COVID, it really put a kibosh on what we do. But we really want to do a lot of events with Ace Prime as well. When we took over the distribution and and, and really created that relationship with them, so. I think the second half of this year, you're going to see a lot more events coming from Crown Heads and Ace Prime. My buddy Luciano, um, he's going to be doing some events, traveling with their sales guys. And I tell everyone, you know, if you want to talk cigars, talk to any of the Crown Heads reps, Ace Prime reps. We, our guys are very well educated on brand and blends and all these kind of things. But there's a whole other level when you have a guy like Luciano. Luciano at an event, if you get a chance to go and, and, and meet him at an event, I mean, I, if you're a geek about tobacco or or anything of that nature, he will take it to another level that most sales guys just can't do. Yeah. And so he'll be getting out there doing events. John is always creating swag for Crown Heads, and we're working on things. Um, we have a lot of exciting, I think, events coming later in the year. And as more and more people, I think, are opening their stores or, or, or more – um, doing events and 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 allowed really allowed to have people back in their in their lounges at more of 100 percent capacity. Um, you're going to see more events, I think, from everybody. And so we're prepared. Yeah. We're ready to go and do it. And um, and all of us are biting at the bit to get out there. I tell everyone, look, as a national sales manager, I travel as much as uh, as as when I was just on the road representing the brand, right? And so, <clears throat> but one of our strengths is getting out there meeting consumers, talking cigars, and COVID has put handcuffs on a lot of us. And that's what we do best, man. That's what we do best. And so all of us are dying to get out there. And uh, look, I have retailers out there that say, hey, look, I want to do an event, but I've only allowed to have 50% capacity. And as soon as I have an event, I'm going to blow over that number. I have to wait. There's other people saying, hey, my area is opened up. I got 100% capacity now. I can start scheduling events for later in the year. Multi-vendors that were canceled last year are starting to be rescheduled. So there's a lot of exciting. If you're a consumer, I think the second half of 2021, there's going to be a lot of events to attend, not yeah. just from Crown Heads and Ace Prime, but from a lot of other brands as well. 
that is what our industry does best is gather, yes. smoke, mm -hmm. and really create a community. And that's something that COVID has kind of taken away from us. Thank, thank God we have the technology, you know, doing online events or smoke rooms or get togethers um, has really been amazing. I mean, if COVID would have happened in the eighties, you know, who knows where the cigar industry would have gone, you know what I mean? But it didn't, it happened now we had the technology. So all of yeah. us have really tapped into that. I didn't know what the hell zoom was, but now I'm a, a zoom fanatic. And, uh, and same thing with, um, steam yard and all these other ones. It's, it's really getting, uh, getting to, um, to know all these different things that, uh, was not part of our vocabulary before, you know? Yeah. Molly Crew probably would have come out with a four disc live album <laughs> if this happened in the eighties. Yeah, I don't think we needed that. Four, four vinyl, four vinyl, four, 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 vinyl. four vinyl. Yeah, my yeah. bad. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I I agree with you there. It's like I I kept uh, I kept repeating this at TPE, and I'll say the same thing. I'll keep saying it at PCA. That is that cigars are a contact sport. Yep. You know, you got to be together. That's and I agree with you. The cigar industry does that so well, and so many companies and so many reps from different brands, and 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 you you guys at Crown Heads and Ace Prime are no exception to that rule. That that you, you thrive the most in these social atmospheres where you're in the shops, you're at the. It could be a even a big event like Big Smoke or Rocky Mountain Cigar Festival or Great Smoke. Uh, that's where, that's where the cigar industry really shines, you know, because that's where the, the business part of it is, it's great. It's, it, it, people make a living at it and it supports so many people around the world that, that a lot of cigar smokers don't even think about, but the social acts aspect of it, um, it, it, it really does in, in this, in this weird kind of way, it really kind of improves it improves lives. I'm not, I'm sorry if that's yeah. overstating it, but no, I truly no. believe that. I do too. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I think for a good example, um, I think it was last weekend, I had my good buddy from college uh, come down and visit us. He, he moved to Florida way before I did. And, um, you know, him and I, we grilled for the family, his kid, my kids and my wife. And then at the end we got our drinks and we sat on the lanai and we smoked cigars and, and that whole thing of, man, I miss this. I miss going into a store, getting there, setting up. Guys are going to come buy cigars at that shop anyway. So they're going to buy boxes or single sticks, right? But when they come to an event, those are where we get to answer the questions. They get to learn more about the brand. They're curious or they get a special deal. Um, and you get to really hang out and break bread with people and really get to know and talk spirits and talk grilling and talk just life. And then I also enjoy that at the end of the event, it's usually just the owner and I, and they're cleaning up, and I get to just have some one-on-one -on -one time. We're not talking business anymore, right? We talked business when I first got there, and we're just talking about life and cigars. And, and man, as a cigar geek in 20 years of my life, I still enjoy talking cigars with people. You know what I mean? And, and it's, just, it's, it's amazing. And, and there's, a, there's a few guys – you know, retailers in my mind that, that, uh, I miss a lot, you know, and, and I hope to be able to see them sooner than later. Yeah. So going back to the, you know, the newer brands and things like that, and people, people always are wondering what's new, but how do you guys as a company balance that with the consumers around the world who, you know, they're so, like, let's, let's pick out a couple, you know, guys and girls from around the world who are premium cigar lovers, who, they say my brand, my cigar is the Jericho Hill or it's the J.D. Howard or it's the Headley Grange. How do you balance the needs of those consumers who are just keyed into those those uh, sort of original or or, um, you know, early stage crown heads brands with the with the people who are who are always in line for the new stuff? You know, I, I think uh, much like, you know, you were talking about music earlier, but, you know, when you listen to the Beatles early stuff compared to the middle of their career to the end of their career, it's really very different. And anyone, Elton John's the same way. I mean, Metallica is another that the sound may change, but it's the same group and the same people. And I and that's obviously I think we take a lot of inspiration from music and that's a big what we do. I think early on, you know, our early releases are very different from, you know, the, the early you know, three or four years compared to the middle four or five years. And then now, 
things change and evolve. And, and, and Four Kicks, which is our original blend that we released, is still a big, big seller and a big brand for us. And so a lot of those guys, I think they, 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 the guys and gals will jump on and ride that wave. And a lot of people that smoke crown heads, you know, they'll say, man, I remember buying a box of four kicks. You know, there were only 69 accounts in the United States that you guys opened in the beginning and I bought a box and I just bought a box of Mil Diaz and you got, you know, two, two end pieces there, you know, the beginning and then the, 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 you know, the now. Right. And so I think, <clears throat> with a brand, you have to think present past and present future. You have to think about where you're going and is it right? Is it right for it? You've never seen us put out a flavored cigar. It's just not for us. You know, yeah. you, you, maybe you've never seen um, something crazy. You know, we, we do what we do. And even though our blends are all very different, you can tell that they're all from the, you know, they're all from the same band. They're all coming from the same people. They're all coming from the same heart. And, uh, and I think um, Ace Prime, has taken us to another level. You know, Juarez and Mil Diaz is putting us in places and retailers, as I mentioned earlier, that maybe looked at boutiques as, man, I don't really need, you know, that many boutiques, or I'm not really interested in stocking too many. Now it's Crown Heads is, and Ace Prime has become a brand where it's, man, I, I need to have you on my shelf now and, and I want to yeah. be a part of that. And so um, just like a band, you know, you, you got guys that will follow your whole career. You have people that will leave that will come back. You have people that just discovered you. You know, I have people that literally I've got messages on Instagram saying, hey, I'll get a friend request. And then I'll, they'll follow up with a message going, hey, I didn't really smoke crown heads. I didn't really know. But I picked up a Juarez um, and I said, who the hell makes this? And they said crown heads. And then I Googled you guys and I'm a fan now. And th there's still people finding us. And that to me is what's incredible. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, that is that that. That's as exciting as meeting a guy who or a gal who said, look, man, I've been with you guys from day one, you know, ride or die, as they say. Um, <laughs> and that warms your heart, man, because this industry, yeah. it's not about producing nuts and bolts and vacuum cleaners. It's really a, a, a product that is grown by hand, you know, worked with hands, rolled by hands, put into boxes. And so when you have that, you build that consistency of not only your cigars, but consistency of the message and who you are as a company. I think that resonates and Ace Prime resonated with us. And that's why we are, uh, you know, aligned with them. And in the future, it looks bright, man. I mean, it's exciting. Yeah. So you mentioned, um, you know, how much you love the Mil Diaz, but, you know, uh, is is that the one that you would say right now for you from the from the crown heads catalog that you're reaching for more than any other or is there a, is, is there anything else you know between crown heads and ace prime that you find yourself all yeah. the time there's three cigars that i smoke at least every day and that's our original four kicks that is the mil Diaz, and that is the luciano lancero those three cigars there you go in the camera I live on those cigars. Now, everything else will fall in there. Las Cal, Jericho Hill, La Imperiosa, and, and everything else we do. But those three cigars I live on. And to me, that's kind of my lineup. You know, if I'm going to sit on the uh, – I'm, I'm going to grill out. And I know I'm going to be out there for a few hours. Um, those are the three cigars I want. You know, and I want the I want the four kicks in Corona Gorda. I want the, the Luciano Lancero comes in a Lancero. And then the last cigar I'll smoke is the Mil Diaz usually in the Edmundo size. And those are my three go-to cigars. Okay. So is, mm -hmm. is it time? I think it's time. Do you think it's time? I think it's time. I think it's time. I got to find my, I, I didn't pull up my. Uh, I see that. You see that? You I notice, do. You notice I know that. what's going on. Yeah, you're, it's not your first rodeo. It's you, not. You know what's happening. Um, actually, hold on. This is show 100. Thirteen, you guys. Know, you guys I know what you're doing, man. Come I on. Should, now. I should have it together here. It's uh, it's, uh, yeah, we're good now. Okay. It is. Yeah. Is it time? I think it's time. All right, it is time for this week's numero de los muertos. Oh, see, I failed. I failed. That's all right, though. It's all good. Numero de los muertos, as always, is brought to us by our friends at Smoke In.
Ah. All right. So I have we have to do the intro again because I'll I'll never forgive myself. Okay. It is now time for this week's Numero de los Muertos. There we go. There we go. I wouldn't feel right about the segment if we didn't have that music going. So, Garrett, what do you have for us this week? All right. So, this week's Numero de los Muertos. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm just giving a number. And you guys got to come up with all of it. So, the number is 2,800. And eleven, and we don't get any other info. That's it. Two thousand eight hundred and eleven. All right. That, as always. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. No, it's. I'm just saying. As always, our our viewers uh, on Facebook and YouTube can uh, leave guesses in the comments. Um, and Miguel and I are gonna play twenty questions here. <clears throat> so I mean, obviously, if you guys cheat that is a, a pretty a pretty easy cheat number so don't do that uh, feel free to ask yes or no questions and i will be answering yes or no questions i'm ready all right go ahead throw down is it a baseball number it is not mm. so this is a number having to do with people dying mm is so 2811 is it worldwide or just in the u.s oh you said yes or no questions mm -hmm. is, is it worldwide this... it is not mm. is it north america it is not is it war is it war related it is. Does that have to do with Normandy? I'm going to give it to you, Miguel. Wow. Is it really D-Day? It is, it is the uh, number of Americans lost <laughs> yesterday. Yes. Well, 1944. And, and because of their bravery and because of their sacrifice, we get to smoke cigars, drink a cocktail in a free country. That's right. Damn straight. That's right. God so, bless those guys. Yep. So cheers. Cheers to uh, all those who fought in World War II and fought for every United States uh, armed forces over the years. Cheers to you guys. Absolutely. Uh, we didn't get to do a Memorial Day show. And uh, I had this number uh, ready for a few weeks now. And um, yeah, our many thanks. And uh I mean, we can't say enough for the sacrifice that many men and women have given over the years. But uh, today I wanted to give that that special number in uh, 1944 and what that yeah. means to us today. 1944. Uh, wow. Isn't that crazy? And it uh, is, you know, um, probably about five years ago, I got to hear um, just a, an incredible story from my wife's grandfather who was on, he was on a boat, he was on a destroyer on his way to Japan. If for some reason the bombs didn't work, they were ready to uh, shell, mm. uh, you know, the coat and just talking about what that meant for, you know, them, even if you're not in active, active combat, the, yeah. the emotions and everything that as you're getting ready, you know, there were so many more people involved in that conflict then you know that we can't even imagine so uh big time thanks to yeah. all our vets especially those who have fallen and given their life yeah amen to that uh and our uh i mean i think we all if we didn't if we didn't serve we consider ourselves i i know i consider myself i'll just speak for me anybody who i know personally uh, who is in my family or a friend who served uh they just uh, it it it, uh, it holds a special place for me. Those mm -hmm. who serve because I did not serve myself, yep. and uh, you know those who those who do serve and those who did serve, uh, you hold a special place. So, you know, hats off, cheers to you guys. Yeah, absolutely. We have uh, Brian McGee, who's our Texas rep. He uh, he was a Marine. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we have uh, my brother. One of my brothers served in the Navy, and then my two brother-in-laws served in the Army, and one of them. 
um, the three tours of Iraq uh, during his last war. And, uh, you know, you always, the stories are sometimes just blow you away. You know what I mean? And, and you just think to yourselves, how can any young man or woman um, experience those things, but, um, they do it. And, uh, and the, the gratitude is always, uh, you know, is always there from, for all of us. And as we celebrate things like, you know, anything that, that, that honors, uh, people's service and, and not just military. I mean, it could be your police officer down the street. Luckily yeah. I've got to meet a lot of police officers and, and, uh, that either smoke cigars or have retired and own cigar shops that are just incredible people in the stories. I mean, it's amazing, right? And I didn't serve a family that served, and you just you have uh, you have a special place in your heart for for those people, especially the ones that are dealing with you know PTSD and and the the oh. effects of war. Um, you know, your heart goes out to them, and and, yeah. and this is you know it's the greatest country in the world, man. You ask yeah, any right. of these you ask any of these cigar makers, you know, who who fled Cuba, they'll they'll tell you this is the greatest country in the world. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So that so, was this week's. Numero de los muertos. All right. So it's lightning round time. So Miguel, if you could bring back any fashion trend from the past, what would it be? Oh my Lord. You know, I, I did not know this question. <laughs> um, oh Lord, that is a tough one. You know, um, as much as I despise ties, I love wearing suit jackets and, and everything, but the fashion of the early 1900s, I'm a big baseball fanatic. And um, so I look at a lot, of, but I'm a historian, uh, uh, you know, as a hobby. And when you see some of these pictures, especially of like the Negro League players and you go, even the major league guys like Babe Ruth and them, the way they dressed back then was so incredible. I mean, the fashion was amazing. I cannot believe that people would sit through an entire baseball game in a suit and tie and women would wear yeah. dresses and hats. And, um, but I love that look. I love that, that, um, just that style that they had back then. Mm -hmm. And, and there's a, it's a caveat to that is the baseball sweater, the cardigan that players used oh, to yeah. wear before they started wearing jackets and, yeah. and other things. Back in the 20s and before that, each team had their own cardigans that the players would wear when it was colder. And I, I think those cardigans should come back. So older style fashion from those days, I think, were just amazing. Yeah. I love it. So who was your number one celebrity crush when you were a, a teenager? Oh, my Lord. Who did I have a crush on celebrity-wise? Hmm. Ooh, that's that's tough, man. That is really you know who um, I would say. I remember my mother would put on. Um, uh, it's escaping me the name of the movie. They're remaking it now. West Side Story. Oh yeah. And and I just thought the world. Of Rita Moreno in that, mm -hmm. and I just I fell in love with Rita Moreno, and to this day, when you see interviews, she's a much older woman, and she carries her age incredibly beautiful. Yep. And I had a crush on her. My mom would put on West Side Story; it was my mom's favorite movie, and I would just like every time she came on the screen, I would just think, "Oh my God, she's so beautiful." Yeah, and that reminds me of this uh, stand-up comedian we went and saw, who had this just amazing bit on West Side Story. And he said, so you're going to tell me that in Spanish Harlem, a guy is running down the street yelling Maria and only one woman comes to the window. Yeah. 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 That, 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 that doesn't work. That doesn't work. You know what I mean? My, my wife's, uh, she, her last name is, you know, they have two last names, right? So her name is Guayar Perez, right? And the joke with the name Perez is if you need something done, just call out to a Perez because there's always one around. And same <laughs> thing with Maria. I mean, Maria, I mean, if like you look at my wife's old, uh, like school books from when she went to school in Puerto Rico, like it was like 20 Marias in her class, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> and, and so, yeah, that's a little, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Uh, Miguel, if you could add any person's face to Mount Rushmore, 
who would it be? Mm. Probably FDR. I love presidential history as well. And I think there's a lot of good and bad in every leader we've ever had in this country. I don't care. George Washington, Barack Obama, everyone in between, Trump, Reagan, I don't care who it is. Everyone has good and bad in their past, right? But I think FDR, when you really look at the impact he had on the country at that time, I think he is worthy of going on um, on Mount Rushmore. Yeah, I would agree. I, I think. like it. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, let's get into this week's notable smokable. And as always, notable smokables are brought to you by Ace Prime. Notable hey. smokable. Notable passion, notable purpose. So, and you may be familiar with Ace Prime, Miguel. Very uh, much. So, uh, as you know, each week we talk about a cigar that we have smoked recently that caught our interest. It could be a cigar that we revisited for the first time in a decade that uh, we hadn't smoked in a long time. Or it could be something brand new to the market that we tried for the first time. Uh, so, Miguel, is there something that you smoked recently that really kind of fits that criteria? Yeah, so I took a little trip uh, to New Jersey recently, and we have a lot of in-house reps all over the country that work directly for Crown Heads. We have a broker in New York, and we treat him like an in-house guy. His name is Miguel Montañez. He goes by La Chaveta. Um, he obviously is a broker, so he brokers multiple brands. And <clears throat> I've always had an affection for this little brand out of Chicago um, uh, called Patina. The owner, Mo, he's oh, a great yeah. dude. Yeah. I love Patina. And I don't know, maybe because it was a Connecticut. I just hadn't really smoked this Connecticut. I, I more smoked his other stuff. But I smoked, a, it was like a petite Corona in the Patina Connecticut line. And it blew me away, blew me away. Yeah. And I probably smoked four or five of those, that those three days I was with him. I was blown away by Patina. And so whenever people ask me, you know, too, I always recommend Mo and, and Patina is a great brand, um, really small kind of micro brand. And I, I just think if you're a Connecticut fan or you want to explore some Connecticut's outside of, you know, look, Crown Heads and Ace Prime make them. But as a brand that I'm not affiliated with, uh, Patina makes a hell of a Connecticut. And I think it's wonderful. Yeah, I agree. That's a very good cigar. Garrett, what was your notable this week? Well, up at that guy's weekend this last weekend, my buddy Raul gave me a tobaccology by Oscar. Oh, yeah, yeah. I had not had it. And it blew me away. That was a damn good cigar. Yeah. Um, smooth and creamy and complex. I'm going to be getting some. Yeah, Oscar Valladares making some good stuff. Um, mine this week was actually, um, it was an Asylum 13, but it was actually the, um, the Corojo which, uh, you know, they're, they're more known, you know, the, this Corojo is really a medium bodied, uh, more of a budget line cigar. Um, you know, definitely not in, cause a lot of the asylum 13 stuff you find is going to be the massive ring gauge. It's going to be really strong, powerful, peppery blends, but this was a nice medium body Toro. Uh, I'd say it was a six by 50 or six by 52. And, uh, I actually smoked two of them over the last couple of days uh, over at Sodi's Cigar Shop and a very nice medium bodied cigar, easy to smoke, plenty of smoke output, uh, great price point. So that one, uh, I'll honestly say, you know, not I don't mean this in any disparaging way. I was surprised by it because I was I was expecting, um, you know, I kind of went into it with this notion that it was going to be a really powerful Corojo wrapper, uh, but it was it was nice and medium. Very good smoking experience. Tom, Tom Lazuka and Christian Ayora, they, they, I mean, they are the kings of Honduras, man. They do everything that comes out of that factory is just money. I mean, they are, they do great cigars. Yeah, it was a really good one. So that was this week's Notable Smokables brought to you by Ace Prime, improving lives through fine cigars. Visit aceprime.com to learn more. So, to give our viewers and listeners an idea of some stuff we have coming up, we have a full month of June here at How About That Cigar Live. Next week on the 14th, we're going to talk to Nick Melillo from Foundation Cigars. 
And then the following Monday on the 21st, we're going to talk to John Carney from LFD Cigars. And closing out the month of June, we have the one and only Juan Martinez from Hoya de Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we will have live TP, sorry, live (laughs) PCA trade show coverage starting on July 9th, which just happens to be, this is insane. So the first day of the trade show, I'm turning 50 years old. Hey, you look great for 50, brother. You mm-hmm. look fantastic. <laughs> I am I am nine years younger than you, and I have way more white in my beard than you do, sir. <laughs> you look fantastic. I call I, him Pavarotti. I was and, grateful to get my mom's genetics because she, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't, I can't explain it. I don't understand it. I'm grateful for it. So, and you got, you guys have Nick coming up from Foundation. You have who else? John Carney. John Carney, who's great. He, that's a guy who's really into grilling. Oh yeah, great guy, wonderful guy. Um, and then you have Juan Martinez from Hoy de Nicaragua. Look, man, I feel like a pair of brown shoes in a room full of tuxedos, you guys. <laughs> I mean, it can only go up from here. I, those guys are wonderful, oh, and they are amazing cigar makers. Uh, I will be tuning in, my friends. Awesome. No, well, brother, you, you, are, you are in the same pantheon along with, uh, yep. along with these other gentlemen. So we, we appreciate you uh, being on episode 113. Give our viewers and listeners the uh you know give them the lowdown in case they don't know already where's the best place to keep up with everything from crown heads and ace prime well i would definitely say check out instagram um luciano is on instagram uh john huber's on instagram john's under uh the crown heads so if you really want to know what's going on with crown heads that's a great way of Luci- um, uh, luciano um luciano his uh his page is full of great stuff cigars and tobacco those are great places to check out um, and uh, you know, uh, that's really where I think today's industry is. It's on Instagram because it's so visual and our industry is so visual. So I would tell you, if you have an Instagram account, jump over there, find us on Instagram and, um, and, and follow us and get into the world of crown heads and ACE prime man, and, and stick to us, uh, this week, uh, crown heads has a, a big announcement coming this week. And then, uh, as we get closer to the trade show, Ace Prime and Crown Heads will be putting out press releases on some of the new releases and things that are coming down the line. A lot of exciting products for uh, for everybody out there. So keep your ears peeled as, or your eyes peeled and your ears open to all the new exciting stuff that's coming up. Nice. Well, Miguel, cheers, brother. Thank you again so much for being uh, being a third time guest on How About That Cigar Live. We love you, brother, and we, we really appreciate your time tonight. Thank you, guys. Thanks. And uh, hang out just for a second after the show in the green room. Absolutely. So uh, as always, our viewers and listeners, you guys are the best part of How About That Cigar Live. We are so grateful for you watching and listening as always. If you guys have questions for Garrett or myself, email us directly on the website at howaboutthatcigar.com. Follow us on all social media at HBT Cigar. And until we see you guys next time, burn cigars, not bridges. See you guys. Thanks, Thanks, everybody.